So I let the office know about Tron, so we're just kind of waiting to get word back. We just got an email yesterday that okay. um, they are asking us to go between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Oh. Uh, that came down from the attraction, not from our side. So they told us today if we get any feedback to let them know and they'll submit it. And that's where we're at yeah. right now. So. I mean, if people are paying between four and eight, nine hundred dollars an hour, you think it would be priority? You, I mean, enough with your logic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we went on this entire tour and I had some issues. And I'm going to talk about it in this email. Sent this email to Elizabeth Mullins, Julie Motzel, and Jeff Lindbergh. I didn't really know who to all contact, so I sent it to three different people. Thursday, April 6th, 2023. Hello, my name is Jason. My daughter and I did the VIP tour at Walt Disney World on 329-2023. Our tour guide was Aaron Carlson. I wanted to express our frustration and displeasure with some of the things that happened on this tour. I was under the impression that we'd be able to go in the front of the line for any rides we wanted to as many times as we wanted to. Aaron told us we're only allowed to go on Guardians of the Galaxy two times, which is the newer, like, rotating roller coaster at Epcot. So at Epcot, I know we want to do Guardians, and that's actually where we're going to enter the park at. Oh, cool. So if you want to start with that, we can. If you'd rather go and do some other stuff and then come back and do it, we, that's that's Let's an start with it well. in case yep. we do it again. As long as we're right there, yep. And that one, um, we're allowed to do it more than once, but just that one, we're only limited to twice. So, where in the terms and conditions does it state that we were looking forward to riding that ride over and over? We also wanted to go on Tron, which is like riding a motorcycle. But, um, gotcha. Did you uh, find anything else out about that? I haven't heard back yet, so yeah, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> So who are you in contact with about asking about your Tron? Tron, your boss? So that, yep, so we reach out to our management and then they're reaching out to the uh, the folks over at Tron. Or tomorrow, technically Tomorrowland, which is yeah. where that falls under. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could mention exactly what I said. Say, I guess said they're spending 6500 <laughs> Right, yeah. Huh? yeah it's, and this is what we me. paid for. Aaron said that he was allowed to take guests on there when it opened and now he's not allowed to take guests on that ride. I asked him to contact his manager, which he did. I kept asking if he received a response and the manager said, no, not to contact him. We would contact you when we have an answer. Why didn't we ever receive an answer? Aaron said that we'd have to pay $20 per person in the lightning queue if it's still available for us to ride. I wasn't happy after hearing that. We spent $6,500 for what? To ride all the rides? that we ride on every day anyway with the $29 a person genie pass. I also think we should be able to even be in the head ahead of the Lightning Lane customer given what we're paying. So my next question is, what is VIP about this experience? All we get to do is go in the Lightning Lane, also limited or non-existent on some rides. We do not get anything that's VIP. We were able to get snacks once, some water and ice cream at the end. Why would you guys do more for the guests? Why nickel and dime people charging them for food and to ride selected rides when you're charging $650 an hour for 10 hours? For an employee, you're paying an hourly wage too. I also think it's ridiculous that VIP tour guides are making the same amount of money whether the rate is $450 per hour or $900 per hour. Why wouldn't your tour guides benefit more? Why does Disney deserve more profit on these busy days? I'm trying to wrap my head around that being fellow business owner. Please take a look at the attachment. It specifically says currently none of our attractions are excluded from a VIP tour experience. This is a false statement. Also on the website it states just tell your VIP tour guide what you'd like to see and they'll customize your day to your desire. This is also a false statement. I sent more on this single experience than I did on my entire trip. It was not worth it. Not even close. I look forward to your response. So some people might say, you're a little over the top, Jason. Why are you doing this? Because I expected a lot more. So you guys will see this entire first video. What ends up happening, like Aaron does a great job. He knows the way around the parks. We got to go on a lot of rides. We actually met Blair's teacher. Her, uh, and they ended up taking along with us. So that was great because um, we only had two. And then we brought, you know, brought the eight of them with us, which was great. Um, but we didn't really get what I thought was a VIP experience. So you can see the email, April 7th, 
to 14 p.m. So just over 24 hours, 25 hours. Thank you for your candid and clear feedback about Disney VIP tours here at Walt Disney World Resort. Your point of view and interest in providing feedback is the only way we can be the best. For that, I'm thankful for you taking the time. May I have the best phone number and contact period so I may reach out and discuss your email. So I sent Jeff my phone number and uh, he called me two hours later. So we're going to listen to the call and uh, we'll talk about it after. Jason, it's Jeff Lindbergh from Disney VIP Tours. Hey Jeff, how are you? I am uh, grateful for your time. Is this still a good time or are yeah, you uh, I'm just, trying to wrap something else up? I'm driving, I'm good. So I got a while in the okay. car here. So I am, of course, passionate to hear about your feedback as the business owner. That's definitely uh, one of the reasons that I want to call because I, I do want us to get better and I do want us to connect and um, I could uh, sense your disappointment, of course, but I also could take the time as a partial business owner with my amazing uh, uh, vice presidents to kind of say, this needs attention. And especially when it comes to uh, what my southern mother says is proof in the pudding about the confirmation letter. You know, there are things that we definitely sometimes, I think, let our other divisions, which way too molecular, but Disney Signature Services uh, who does the booking with your travel agent, um, not checking up on that stuff. And so for you and for Blair to be prepared for a day, and it's not there clearly, and thank you for showing me um, and reminding me of what those confirmations look like, that is unfair. And I can see why you would be frustrated to say, you know, you didn't tell me what this product was supposed to be. And by the way, there are other elements from a uh, perspective of what you say it is going to be, but it doesn't feel like, and it feels like a whole lot of money. And so um, I wanted to make sure that um, I took the time to listen to you and not just read your words and make sure you knew that you have my full attention and uh, my own business attention as a business owner. I mean, I'm here to listen. So I think people, when they do the VIP experience, the tour, I think they think they're getting much more. And um, Aaron clarified some of that stuff that there's actually like a behind the scenes kind of, there's, there's two other like tours that you can get. You're not really seeing the, you know, the inner workings or behind the scene things. Um, you know, I thought we could go to the castle. You can't do that. You know, it's really just, it's really yep, just yep. Um, a glorified genie pass is what we, and, and obviously some rides you can do more than once, but um, you know, the, the two best or biggest ones you can't. So that was yep. just sort of frustrating in the whole thing. And I think that if people are spending, I mean, I know you got, you know, I ask a lot of questions like, like how many a day? And, you know, find out you do almost a hundred a day or whatever. And I start to do the math on this stuff and to find out that we're spending more time even waiting. And it's not like we're more important than your other customers, but we sort of are if we're spending, you know, 6,000 or $4,500 to $9,000 additional on top of our tickets for this so-called VIP experience, there should be something more, I think, for the people that they're able to, you know, get to the front of the lines a little bit even quicker than they are. Are you good with me interjecting or do you just- Yeah, yeah, no, go for it. Yeah, let's talk. Yeah. Well, first of all, your business acumen is something that I'm definitely paying attention to. And so I want to um, speak to that and make sure you understand that I appreciate some of your keen awareness to the overall business structure, especially as a business owner. And now, I do think content creation is business ownership. I think that there's a lot of navigation of what intent is, and that's one of the things that you clocked us on, is what is intent versus what is delivered? What is the truth behind what is um, sometimes magical words? And so I just want to kind of speak to those really quickly. The first one is, is I think that we as a senior leadership team have to wake up to the value proposition that you as a consumer are um, asking of us the minute that we monetize Lightning Lane or change Fast Pass, which was, I assume you've been vacationing with us or tracking us enough to know that oh, yeah. Lightning Lane is newer and it's monetized, okay. Um, that we, we offer a value proposition. You know, I think that it's two different things. When you and I um, go on a, I'll, the example I use uh, when I'm um, navigating a business model change here is when we pass first class, we say to ourselves on a, on a commercial airline, um, I could have afforded this, 
I could have saved money to do it, or I could have used loyalty points. But I am choosing to now walk past um, the first class row. I don't hold them um, hostage in my head for having something that I don't. I don't sit there and go, oh, first class. I mean, sometimes I think, I wonder if they're getting cocktails that are free, and I wonder about it, but I don't get mad at it. And so what Disney has to do, and what I have to challenge my um, my commercial teams to understand is, we've got to we've got to reckon with the fact that not every guest is the same level of VIP that you, so you and Blair, were paying for a value proposition that was different from our other consumers. And so if we state that there is the same thing, we owe it to you to make it different. And so um, the the impact of your email isn't um, as important. Like it helps me have conversations with a guest or, or consumer like you. But it also kind of reminds us in written word what we have to understand about the business. And so there are things that you definitely got that um, are creation of that dollar. So um, our access levels, you can get more attractions than an average Genie Plus day. You can have transportation to and from. We do uh, price a value on what Heron and his personality is like. Um, if you stayed at certain times, a spectacular show, viewership, the snacks, etc. All of that is part of it. But what you are challenging us on and what I'm hearing clearly and I want you to hear in my voice as we try to make this connection coast to coast, if you will, is that I do think that we have to reckon and waken up to what you're, what you're sharing. And these negotiations have to be more transparent to you, the consumer. And um, especially things like the confirmation letter. You shouldn't have to guess. You should know exactly what you're getting. And that's what I felt at the bottom of your letters that you're basically saying, you got to tell me what you're going to give me, and you can't not, you can't change, you can't um, shell game on me, if you will, you know? Yeah. Like, the one thing about Disney that Disney rarely ever drops the ball on is detail, right? And what really surprises me is how large of a business this can be, you know, just at Walt Disney World, and you throw it to all your parks, that you guys aren't putting together a bigger legal document telling people what they're getting. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about a lawsuit with me, but I deal with stuff every day where people, people will sue me for, and I'm like, are you kidding me for that? Like, and I'm surprised that, that you guys haven't taken that step to, to clearly spell that out when you guys spell out so many other things for so many different things that you guys do in the parks. I'm just surprised that you haven't done that there. Uh, another thing, and this had nothing to do with me, and I would not have even mentioned it in there, but I was surprised that, just say Aaron, I didn't ask him how much he makes, right? I asked the question, well, what's a normal tip for you? And he did share that. And and I, and I did say, well, if I'm paying $450 or 900 do you get more? And he said, no, I get, an hour, I get an hourly wage, and that's what it is. And that's none of my business, but at the same time, I'm very surprised about that unless you're only charging the difference based on the experience you have with that individual person, but it sounded like the price fluctuates due to the park and how busy they are, which I think that's another thing that's sort of unfair, not 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 for us, but for the employee yeah. that is yeah. doing that. And that's just my just opinion that on this whole thing. Yield, yeah, that great battle of yield management. But I get it. I get what you're saying. And we see this with so many elements of the Walt Disney World Resort, but I definitely... Um, attract that comment and I understand what you're, you're saying from that perspective. The other thing that is just uh, one of those moments that I have to apologize for and I hope, I hope again you hear that I am empathetic to a very clear message for you, but uh, the other thing that is uh, was not great and uh, what I was reviewing with Elizabeth because we take each of these calls and we we'll review them and yep. um, of course follow up with her afterwards is this Tron debacle that I went through last week and you and many other guests um, suffered through it and that is that uh, we should have been very clear that on April 4th is when the attraction is open and it's guaranteed until then um, we had a tremendous setback with um, our partners at Tron when it came to um, when they thought that we should visit the attraction and uh, what you witnessed that day was a lot of um, and again, this is, sounds like a whole bunch of excuses, by the way. I'm just trying to tell you that 
believe me, I was in the thick of it and blushing the entire time, was your callback about how if Aaron's leader is um, engaging him and hitting a button, uh, A, help out your employee, and B, I'm a revenue-generating guest who wants a response. Don't keep yeah. me waiting. You know? And uh, that was just a miss on, um, and I refuse to say Magic Kingdom, on our part. It, it was not a great or healthy uh, relationship as they tried to open their attraction on that, um, that preview week. And it really has made me pause. Uh, we don't have a, anything opening you know, over the next couple of months, but it's made me pause on your attraction opening. To your, um, to your confirmation, tell me, you know, document for me what I'm paying for. Um, Tron is sitting there buzzing in the corner of the Magic Kingdom, and I'm going to look at um, Aaron and ask him about it. So um, that is that, and the leader not responding is something that I wanted to address as well. The one thing about Guardians that we need to figure out is the health and wellness of a human riding it more than once. When it opens, that we tried to hold a safety limit of one per time, because as you've experienced, it's uh, not for the faint of heart. And so much so that we are um, bound and required, and even day guests have to do this, there has to be a time in between your visitation. And, the, and, and from a health and wellness perspective, we as a company believe that that is the amount of time to fully exit the attraction and fully go back into the attraction, that the, that the, the body can reset in a way that you know wouldn't be problematic to the health and wellness of our guests. Um, but with a VIP tour, we're trying to say, you know, you can typically do things, but we want to we want to hold true to to that time. And sometimes with the IP tour, it can go much faster. So your other call out of Guardians, I need to get uh, more clear on as well, because um, if you and Blair were ready to rock it for a third time, I needed to figure out a way to help you know whether that's an option. And for you, for you all to assess, either our company is going to say you can ride it three times, four times, five times. Or, or you can't because X, Y, or Z, but you just want to know what that is. And so um, that's another thing that I'm very clear up. So I guess about that, he never said anything about you can't even go back to back because we could have gone back to back. But the reason we didn't is because we were coming back to the area. We were going to end at that area, so we were just going to do it again at the end. But, yeah, that was never talked about that you're not allowed to do it too close in any amount of time. Like that was never right. that was never like stated. Making sure that my guys are really clear on the topic. Point. Yeah, and I mean he's Aaron's knowledgeable. I mean he's been doing this a long time, and I'm not throwing oh him under gosh. the bus at all. I think he does a great job. No, no. And by the way, while I, while we're on Aaron, really quick, he has to do an after action report, um, and he was sharing from Milwaukee and um, that you're a YouTuber and that he enjoyed the entire tour. But he also said that um, one of his favorite parts was warming up to Blair, and he hopes that he was a, a home run player and that he would happily host you again. I know this is not about him. I mean, unless you are going to change it no. in our personal phone call. But it sounded like you weren't interested. It sounds like you had a great connection. And I just wanted to echo that he had also a great connection with you. Okay, that's awesome. And I know, like, in the frustration with whoever his supervisor was, when they said, don't call us, we'll call you, and I know that sometimes when I'm around people, like I'll, I'm not like, I'm not necessarily trying to like get them to say more than they should. And you probably did there and I get it, but it's just, it's frustrating again, being at a place that is always saying that never says no, right. You're not supposed to. And all of a sudden I'm like, what is going on here? I, you know, and then I find out, you know, just say the food thing. There's nowhere anywhere it said they were supposed to get food, but if we're spending that kind of money, again, it was two people, so it's different. Most people are probably, family are bringing more people on these things. But right. you think that there would be more involved with a VIP experience than than what we're getting? And it just, it just really, you know, I'm jumping around here, but it was just, like I said, just a little disappointing at the end of the day. Um, yeah, yeah. By the way, you're not jumping around. I do think that the acumen that you have has my attention. That's the reason why this call yeah. matters to me is because you don't jump around. I, I get what your point is. I think that your instincts um, showcase that, and that's the reason why I'm, I'm, I want to entertain this conversation. That it, it, it helps us be better. And realize this. That, though, so I, VI, VIP for me might be different than other people. I gamble on the, at the highest level in the world at every casino and I get treated, I mean, they roll up the red carpet for me when I go to places. I mean, we'll get butlers, we'll get 
uh, our own chefs at places. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, whatever. People. You name it, we get it. And so it's just, and I, my daughter is part of that too. You know, she's in limos with us all the time. Um, we go to the, we go to Michelin, three Michelin star restaurants. We do a lot of stuff together. And that, I guess, are we expecting a little bit more? Probably. And I guess that that's part of it. Too. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not picking that up uh, as far as, um, the message that you're trying to give, nor yeah. where I'm saying that I think we have opportunities. I, I, I don't know if I don't know if I think that needs to be part of our conversation because it's still a service that costs the amount of money. And by the way, I have seasonal pricing, so like you said, I go up and down, and you paid. Um, uh, I don't think you were at the nine. You were at six fifty. So this weekend I'm at nine. So you know that you know demand management is, is different. I, I don't. What I'm trying to say is, I don't think that you need to show me that you have a, um, an enjoyable taste with your life with Blair. That doesn't matter. Yeah. What matters is that I need to. I need to to price my product based on the reception of the reception, and I would offer perception of what the product is. But at the end of the day, as much as I am dogging, it uh, sounds like my product. I really also do believe in my product. And, um, there are things that can make it great, but I don't think that you had a great day. And so uh, I want to make sure that you know that I'm absolutely happy to refund the entire um, uh, day for you. And I would like for us to start a relationship that if you do, and I know that either your travel is uh, scheduled based on content creation, um, or um, if you're just not loving Disney right now because we disappointed you, that you have my contact for a uh, VIP tour in the future, and I just want to do it again. Um, and I want to get it right. And I don't know if I'll get it right within the next week as we negotiate with the parks and try to change some things. But um, I want to wipe the slate clean. And I know, based on what you're saying about um, your, your, your ability to enjoy some of these areas, it's probably not about the money. It's about um, making sure that business owners hear how disappointed you are and how we need to kind of, uh, like I've used the word reckon or wake up a little bit. So I'm, I'm happy to do that. Your travel agent won't lose anything. To, they'll still get their commission um, if we refund it. Um, I just kind of want to start a new. I want to offer you a tour in the future, and I want to build a relationship wow. with you to make sure that you know that you're taken care of. But the bottom line is, is that I want you to hear that you've been hurt. And I hate when I call a company when I don't feel like I've been hurt. Yeah. Um, I promise that I'm at a senior level, and I, and I, and I have heard you. And, and, your letter will help me navigate some important uh, presentations that I have in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I hope that you hear that I'm genuine and I just want to make it right. Oh, yeah. Jeff, I'm going to tell you what. I mean, from a customer service perspective, um, you're a 10 out of 10. I mean, you're you're very well spoken. You make me feel like I'm heard, like I've been heard. I mean, you, you emphasize that over and over and over again. Um, I mean, you, you, do a, you do a great job at what you do. Um, no, I'm, I'm really impressed with, uh, with you guys reaching out actually within 24 hours, calling me, you know, towards the end of your work day. So what do you think? What do you think of the customer service? I want to tell you guys what I think. I think Jeff is top notch. Jeff makes me feel like I was heard, right? He heard everything that I said. And he validated things that I had said. And he acted very interested and, and was interested in things in my life and my, about my business. And again, Disney, you guys are amazing. Customer service, Jeff Lindbergh, Disney Special Activities and VIP Tours Leadership Team, um, off the charts. And I do appreciate it. But let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.